This episode of Texel is sponsored by 23andMe. Have you been wondering where HD Nation is? It's back in its own long format show. You can find it at hdnation.tv or revision3.com slash hdnation. You can download it, subscribe to it on the RSS feed, get the full thing, the whole Megilla. And of course, you can email us hdnation at revision3.com or tweet at hdnation. We want your HD questions, your home theater questions, your surround sound questions. Uh, this week's episode includes a review of Vizio's latest 55-inch LED HDTV by Mr. Heron. Nice. Some amazing deals on Blu-rays. We talk about the native resolution for six versus can I talk a little faster I'm gonna slow down here <laughs> that's my job <laughs> I'll, I'll go rapid fire until I just we've, keel over <laughs> we've got some amazing deals on blu-rays we're talking about native resolution versus upscaling and how to choose between an Apple TV and a Roku 3 and in honor of all that we got some HD Nation style questions for you Mitch D emails, hi Techzilla gang, have you ever found a device that actually uses HDMI over Ethernet? You mentioned it on the show a few weeks ago, but I have never found anything that actually takes advantage of the feature. It seems like a great way to get rid of cables and clutter. Thanks, Mitch D in Utah. Sure so, enough. We should point out, you said HDMI over Ethernet, as in HDMI over Ethernet Balin. They're commonly used for oh. HDMI runs over 10 to 15 meters, say in a large home, if you're setting up a, a lot of televisions in, the, in a business like a, a, a hotel lobby or, or a foyer or in a studio. Uh, they can have issues, but if you're careful with the cable, they usually work just fine. They're generally priced anywhere from like 20 bucks for a cheap no brand to several hundred for Geffen's top of the line, which should be good for like 70 meters. It's a great way to do long extensions, a yeah. cheap way to do long extensions of HDMI because you can terminate an Ethernet cable yourself, which mm -hmm. is really nice. You can't do that with HDMI cables. But we think you're referring to HEC or HDMI Ethernet channel, which along with ARC or the audio return channel are part of HDMI 1.4 spec called HEAC or HDMI Ethernet audio control. Ah. Now, they are supposed to reduce the number of cables you run between your HDTV and AV receiver and other HD gear. However, we really don't find many. There, I actually well, don't know on. of Let, any. Let's slow down for All a second. Right. Picture time. Here's the thing, though. ARC only carries audio signal from the tuner on your HDTV into your AV receiver, um, i.e. the HDTV is going to generate the audio. That's why it's kind of like audio return channel. Uh, HEC is a little more useful in theory. It's bi-directional 100 megabit per second Ethernet connection, uh, or will be if you can actually get uh, both an HDTV and an AV receiver that have HDMI Ethernet channels and the rest of your components. So, uh, and by the way, uh, props to my cable mart for the graphics there. If your components don't support HEC, you can't use HEC. So in theory, HEC is cool. Because right, I need HDMI to connect my HDTV and my AVR and my Blu-ray player, so why not just run Ethernet over a couple of unused wires on there? And th except that there are no products that actually use that feature yeah. yet. <laughs> so, or may never. We just don't know yet. Which brings us to one of the great myths of HDMI. There really is no such thing as an HDMI 1.4 cable. It's simply a spec that's in the gear you attach to the HDMI cable itself. Uh, basically, as my friend Joffrey Morrison puts it in an article over at CNET called Still More Reasons Why All HDMI <laughs> Cables Are the Same, there are only four HDMI cable types, high speed with or without Ethernet, and standard speed with or without Ethernet. As you can get high speed cables for less than a cup of coffee, just get those with or without Ethernet as you see fit. It's a good read as he tackles yeah. a lot of the HDMI myths, and it's also just a, a good point to remind folks too that sources for your typically your better sources for HDMI cables, be it your online stores or places like Monoprice, the cables yeah. they're currently selling support all current features you're going to need, be it mm -hmm. for 4K resolution or the audio return channel, 3D. Yeah. The Just audio a, return channel, you're probably not going to use. The HDMI over Ethernet, which you probably can't use without replacing all of your components. There's more and more uses for audio return channel okay. now, especially if you're using the apps built into your TV and you want to redirect that audio back to your I AV apologize. receiver. I apologize. That's you're where correct. it really comes in handy, that kind of stuff. But otherwise, yeah, don't worry so much about specs or what brand the cable is, as long as it's a newer cable. It's going to handle just about anything you throw at it nowadays, and it will for years to come. Have you ever been curious about your genetic background? How about what you might learn from your DNA? I was, and that's why I use 23andMe. 23andMe enables anyone to explore their own DNA. It's based on a saliva analysis of approximately 1 million data points in your DNA. Customers receive over 200 personalized reports that cover health risks, physical traits, carrier status for conditions that could be passed on to children, and more. 
23andMe first offered their personal genome service in November 2007 for $999, and it only provided 14 reports. But today you can get over 200 reports, all for only $99. Isn't the evolution of technology wonderful? Now, it may sound intimidating, but 23andMe makes the whole process very simple. First, you buy a DNA kit online, then you mail in your saliva sample, postage is included, and after a few weeks, you receive over 200 health, trait, and ancestry reports. Heck, I've used it, and I can't recommend it enough. So, what are you waiting for? Get started today. Check out 23andMe.com slash to learn more.